Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and not an older one. Official study guide. We are on page number 597 today. We're going to pick up from where we left off. Problem number 16. If you wish to get hold of me uh, at, the end of, at the end of the video, if you find it helpful and you decide that you would like to get hold of me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at it. Number 16. It says that A is a solution to the equation below. We are further told that A is positive. In other words, this equation is going to, it's a quadratic equation, it's going to have two solutions, a positive and a negative, and we are only interested in the positive root. And the question is, what is the value of that positive root? Of course, this has to be positive because this is a bloody gradient problem, and in a gradient problem, you cannot grade in a negative number. I don't know if you knew it or not, there is no way to grade in a negative value. So obviously, we're looking for a positive root. So let's begin. We're looking for two numbers whose product has to be negative 12, and when we add them up, we get positive 1. Very simple. It's going to be positive 4 and negative 3. Positive 4 and a negative 3 will give us the sum of positive x. Positive 4x and negative 3x. And when we multiply them, positive 4x and a negative 3x will give us negative 12x squared. Let's begin, shall we? In these two terms, we have x common. So we have x plus 4 left over out of these two terms. And here we have a negative 3. We're going to take it out as a common. And if we take out negative 3 as a common factor, we have an x left over from here. And here we're going to have positive 4. Because that's the only way we're going to get negative 12. Positive 4 and negative, two, negative 3 is going to give us negative 12. And now we have x over x plus 4 is the common, common factor here. And we are left with x and negative 3. Voila. So the positive, two that, positive root that we're looking for is x equal to positive 3. We are not interested in the fact that x also can be negative 4. We are not interested in that. The question was, was what, what is a equal to? And the answer is a is equal to 3. Let's do the next one, number 17. Number 17. In number 17 we are told that we have two equations and the sum of these two equations, negative 2x squared plus x plus 31 and 3x squared plus 7x minus 8. When we add them up, we get something like this, a is ax squared plus bx plus c. And the question simply is how much is a plus b plus c? In other words, when we add up these two equations, what is the sum of the coefficient of the sum of these two equations? Sum of the coefficient of the sum of these two equations. The result of the sum of these two equations is what I'm going to say. Let's add them up, shall we? Let's add a babbly. So that's the positive 3x, negative 2x. We're going to get x squared, 1x and 7x, that's 8x. And a negative 8 and a positive 31. Uh, negative 30, positive 31 and negative 10 would have been 21, so it's 23. Very good, that's all. So here's our A, here's our B, and here's our C. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 8, and C is equal to 23. There you go. 23 plus 10 would have been 33, so it's going to be 32. Because we're not adding 10, we're only adding 9. The answer is 32. Let's do the next one. In the next one, we are given two simultaneous equations and we are simply asked to solve for y. That's all. Number 18, two very straightforward simultaneous equations. Negative x plus y is equal to negative 3.5, we are told. And positive x plus 3y, we are told, is positive 9.5. And the question simply is, 
how much is what. Notice how I line up everything properly. Always line up your work so it makes it easier for 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 you to solve it, so you don't, you don't end up making careless mistake. There we go. Negative x and a positive x, they're going to drop out. Just solve for y. 1y and 3y is going to give us 4y. 4y is equal to a positive 9.5 and a negative 3.5 should give us positive 6. There you go. y is equal to 6 over 4. You could grade it in 6 over 4 and they will accept it. It's perfectly fine. Or if you want, you can reduce it. 3 over 2. Either way is fine. Even if you did grade in in a non-reduced form at 6 over 4, it will be acceptable. Number 19. The rule in the gradient answer choice sheet is that as long as you can fit the bloody thing in, you're fine. And you only have four spots. And we can we can fit in, we can very easily fit in uh, 6 over 4 as opposed to 3 over 2 because it's the same number of spots. Number 19. In number 19 we are told that we start with 8 employees. And then we hire two new ones each quarter and we want to express this idea we want to express this idea in the, in the form of an equation where x represents your independent variable which is the employee and y represents or rather the quarters because the number of employees that you have depends on how many quarters you've been in business so this is the quarters and this is the employee. Very straightforward. We're starting with eight. We're starting with eight, which means when at zero quarters, when we just when we have just begun at the very beginning, in zero quarters, we still had eight employees because we started out with eight. There you go. So your y-intercept, our y-intercept is eight, and after that, each quarter that goes by, the number of employees in the firm goes up by two. And that's our slope. That's all. It's just straightforward it is. Now what exactly was the question asking? Number 19. Because obviously they're not asking us to grade in the equation, obviously. B is what they're looking for. The question was, what's the value of B? What's the value of the y-intercept? The answer is 8. Because 8 is what we start out with at t equal to 0, time equal to 0, at 0 period. Number 20. Number 20 is a geometry problem. We are told that the arc BC is 2 fifths of the circumference. And they give us a picture that looks something like this. Question is, what is this? What is this angle? If this if this thing represents if this thing represents two fifths of the circle, that's all. That's fine now, shall we? Set it up as set it up as simple proportion problem. It'll make it easier. I'm just going to put circumference over the degree. Set it up as set it up as a simple proportion problem. Proportion of circumference to degree, and we know that the entire circumference of the circle represents 360 degrees. So if you go through the entire circumference, the entire one circumference, we would have, we will have traveled 360 degrees. But we're not we're not going through the entire circumference. We're going through only two fifths of it. The question is, if you do only two fifths of the circumference, how many degrees do you travel through? Let's find out. It's very simple. It's just 360 times 250. 360 times two fifths rather. X is equal to 360 times two fifths. Divide top and bottom by five. 5 will disappear, become 1. 36 has 7 5. 7 5 is a 35. After we take away 35 from 36, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 0 and becomes a 10. And 10 has 2 5s. There you go. 72 times 2. 70 times 2 is 140, so it's 144. 1. Nothing to it. That was the end of the gradient thing. And I believe that is also the end of the section. Yes. Which means tomorrow when we meet, we'll start the new section, section number four, that allows us to use the calculator. Yippee. If you wish to get hold of me, you can send me an email at 
Kishwani Prep at iCloud.com. Alright? Bye now. Go charge your battery in the calculator.